So here we have a typical acid base exam question where we're gonna have a seven marker coming our way. Love it. Okay, so they tell us that learners add 150 centimeter cube of sodium hydroxide um, of unknown concentration. Okay, so here it is. There's the 150 centimeter cube of NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide with an unknown concentration. Um, and they add it to this hydrochloric acid solution. Okay, so there we can see the hydrochloric acid solution. Okay, and they're obviously going to mix it up, blah, 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 blah. And they find that the pH of the final solution is 2. Assume that the volumes are additive. Don't worry about that. Um, that only That's only something you'd have to think about in like higher levels of university. So let me just not even go there. Um, and then it says that the balanced equation for this reaction is that. I mean, we may talk about this one just now. It might come in where I'll say, see guys, that's what they meant. And then, okay, here's the equation. And okay, so that's quite interesting. It looks like an interesting question. So the first question says, um, calculate the concentration of the hydronium ions in the final solution. Okay, so we know the formula pH is equal to negative log of hydronium ions. So if we know the pH, then we can work out the concentration of H3O+. Because remember, this in the square bracket means concentration. So we can say 2 equals to negative log of H3O. Now, how do we do this? Okay, well, what you must remember is that when you have a log where they have not given you a base, then it's always gonna be a 10. So first step, take the negative to the other side. So put it over there, okay? If that's not comfortable for you, you can almost imagine that I take this part to the left and I take this part to the right. Then you would still end up with a positive log and a negative two. Now you just got to uh, remember the following. So with the way logs work, to get this part over here, uh, let me actually write it on the other side here. You're going to say um, the base, which is 10, to the other side, which is negative 2. And so H3O concentration is going to be, now you can just type this on your calculator, but it would be 0. Point, uh, let me get myself some more space, 0, 0,01, and then the mole per decimeter. And now here comes this next one. So it's a it's a nice seven mark question. Ooh, I am excited. You know why I'm excited? Because I've told you this before. Um, when I'm doing these questions with you right now, it's the first time I'm actually doing this question. I don't do it first and then make the video. I'm doing it now with you. So, you know, I haven't done it yet. So I'm excited to see how this one goes. Okay, so we know the concentration of um, hydronium in this solution. Um, why does that feel weird? Why am I writing it like that? Oh, because I'm saying concentration. <laughs> okay, there we go. Everything was feeling weird there. 0 0.01 uh, mole per decimeter. Okay, so, um, right. So this question for seven marks says, what is the initial concentration of this one? Okay, so now I'll be honest. I have absolutely no idea how this question is going to go. I don't know where to start. Um, but it's usually, there's usually only certain things that we could do. This question is going to follow very similar concepts to what I explained in one of my videos where I called, um, I, I spoke about pH with limiting reactants. I'm going to explain it all now anyways, but that is a video that I have made and that explains all the concepts that we are going to look at now. So here, let's have a talk about this. So we get three different scenarios, okay? Scenario one, uh, scenario two, and scenario three. So in scenario one, let's say you have um, perfect amounts of um, acid base. I'm not necessarily saying the volumes have to be the same. I'm just saying that the correct uh, stoichiometric amount needs to be present. So what would happen is, let's say you take a, an acid and you take a base and you add just the right amount of each one so that we know that acids and bases react with each other and they neutralize each other. So if we have the perfect amount of acid and base, then what would you get at the final solution? Well, in the final solution, there would be no acid and no base. There will be no leftovers. So then what would your pH typically be? Well, your pH would typically be seven. That is like a perfect neutral solution, which is not too acidic. It's not too basic. It's perfectly in the middle. Okay, but now in scenario two, so okay, let's just first label e scenario one as equal, um, 
or let's just say just the right amount. I don't want you to think that I'm saying that it's the equal volumes uh, because, you know, from the ratio of acids and bases reacting each other, sometimes the ratio is uh, two to one, for example, okay? But what I'm saying is if we add just the right amount so that there's no leftovers, okay? So just the right amount. Okay, now, um, see now, this is why you should have listened when they were reading you Goldilocks and what do they call it? What are they, what's that story called? Goldilocks. Is it just called Goldilocks? Was it Goldilocks and the porridge or Goldilocks and the bears? Are they bears? Why am I thinking of bears now? I don't know. But I know that with Goldilocks, there was the porridge could either be just right or they could have, it could have been too cold or too hot, something like that. I don't know. I think my childhood, something's wrong there. Can't remember anything. Um, but let's see. So um, let's go to scenario two where um, maybe you guys don't even know about Goldilocks anymore. I don't know. When I was young, um, back in the day, in the 19, yo, I can actually say in the 1900s, because I was born in the 1900s, um, <laughs> there was a story called Goldilocks, and it was about this person um, who wanted uh, the porridge to be just the right temperature, I think, not too hot, not too cold, but just right. Yeah, so maybe, okay, I don't know where I'm going with the story, let's just carry on. Okay, so now let's say in this one, we add um, too much acid, too much acid. Do you guys also struggle with when to use two O's and when to use one? I'm not 100% confident about this. Too much um, acid, okay? So uh, if you add two, let's see what that would look like. So let's say you've got a little bit of base and you've got lots of acid. So then what would happen? Well, um, the acid and the base would still react with each other, right? They would they would see each other and they would be like, yo, bro, what's up? Let's fight. Boom. And they would fight each other and they would destroy each other. But at the end of the battle, there would still be a little bit of acid left over. There would be acid left over because there was more than enough acid. So what this would do is it would cause your pH to become less than seven. Let me say less than seven because some students still struggle with this, this and all of that stuff. So the pH would become less than seven because acids are lower pH. Okay, now when you've got too much base, if you've got too much base, um, then obviously what that would look like is you would have a small amount of acid, large amount of base, and so they would fight each other, they would fight, and then uh, they would neutralize each other. But at the end, there would still be a little bit of base left over in this in the container. Um, not all of it, obviously it will be less than what it originally was, but because there's only base left over, uh, the pH would be larger than seven, larger than seven. Now, I'm not done with this this part. What we need to understand is that in this scenario, you've got acid floating around, okay? So you've got a whole bunch of acid floating around. Now, acids are typically like HA. Now, what do acids do in water? I'm hoping your brain literally just said, Kevin, they ionize, because that means I've brainwashed you enough, and that's a good um, thing, well, at least for your academics purposes anyways. So we can say then that acids ionize. So what would happen is that this acid, which is the leftover from this reaction. So it's not all of the acid that was over here, it's the leftover acid. That leftover acid is gonna be like, oh man, I've just had a fight with the base, I destroyed the base, now what am I supposed to do? Ah, let me go ionize with the water. So this is the leftover acid from this reaction, okay? So maybe this one had 10 moles of acid, and then this is like the three moles of acid that's left over, okay? So it's not the it's not the original acid amount, it's the leftover amount. So that leftover amount is gonna go react with surrounding water, and we're gonna produce H3O and A negative, for example. And this is the part that causes the pH to go down. Okay, now in this scenario, there's leftover base. So it's not all of the base, it's the leftover base after these two had a reaction. So that leftover base, now bases typically have, for example, like NaOH, that base is going to start doing what? Well, it's going to start to dissociate. Because remember, this base is chilling there and it's like, oh, I've just had this fight with the acid. I destroyed all of the acid. What am I supposed to do now? Oh, yes, I'm a base. Let's go dissociate. Um, so dissociation just looks like this. So it produces these OH minuses. And those OH minuses is, is what contributes to the pH going up. So... And remember, these are the left, this is the leftover base and this is the leftover acid, okay? So, 
Hope that makes sense. Acid and base, they fight. If there's leftover acid, it will ionize in the water. If there's leftover base, it'll dissociate in the water. Make sense? Perfect, let's go back to our question now. So, once upon a time, this base and this acid were thrown into a container together, like we see over here. What did they do? They fight. They keep fighting until one of the three scenarios is achieved. Either equal amounts of them have been destroyed, one of them stays alive, such as the acid, or maybe the base stays alive afterwards. I can tell you who was the winner in that reaction, because if I look at these two, I know that the pH is 2 in the final solution. If you think about that, the pH is 2, what does that mean? It means that because the pH is less than 7 in the final solution, it means that the acid was the winner, okay? And we know then that this reaction over here would have taken place in that solution after these two have had a fight with each other. So what we can now do is realize, like we said, that when these two uh, NaOH and HCl reacted with each other inside this container, there was some HCl that was left over, and we know that that HCl would have undergone ionization with water to become H3O plus plus um, Cl minus, okay? Now, yeah, we can also show this like that instead. Okay, so what we can do is if we know the concentration of H3O plus, okay, in this container, and we also know the volume of this container, how much is the volume of this container? Well, they threw all of this liquid and they threw all of this liquid together into one container. So you can just add 250 plus 150. So that's 350 centimeter cubed. This is what they said. Assume that the volumes are additive, meaning that you can just add the volumes. Kevin, wouldn't that always be the case? Well, actually, um, if you go to university and you study anything with chemistry one day, you might come to a certain part where they teach you that some types of liquids in real life, it's very weird. But if you add them together, it doesn't add perfectly. So for example, you'll add this two, these two together and then it would equal like 330 which is weird, but what happens is that the liquids can sometimes almost uh, fit into each other, and so the volumes are not additive. But I promise you, for any high school type of chemistry, the volumes are always going to be additive. Okay, so we know the volume of this container, and we also know the concentration of H3O. So we can use this formula to work out the moles of H3O. Once we have the moles of H3O, we can then work out how many moles of HCl there were after these two reacted. Because remember, these two are gonna react first, and then whatever HCl is left over is gonna ionize, okay? So let's quickly go do that. So we can say 0 0.01 equals to uh, the moles, which we don't know. Now the volume is 350, but we must change it to decimeters. So we are going to divide by 1,000, and that'll be 0 0.35. Okay, so just go get the moles of H3O. So the moles of H3O um, is going to be 0 0.01 multiplied by 0 0.35, and that'll be um, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so now we can look at this reaction over here. Make sure it's balanced. It is, and you can see that the mole ratio here is one to one. So we can then say, therefore, uh, the moles of HCl, um, so let's just make some notes for ourselves here. We can say, therefore, the moles of HCl after, or let's say remaining after this reaction over here, after this reaction, um, will be equal to 3.5 times 10 to the negative three, okay? Um, so now think about this carefully. Now we know how many moles of HCl was left over after these two reacted. So what we can now do is we can now go work out the moles of HCl that we had in the very beginning of the question by using these two numbers over here. So we can go work out the moles of HCl originally, um, and that you can find by just saying C multiplied by V, so it would just be a concentration, which was uh, 0 0.03 multiplied by um, 0 0.2, because that's 200, so it's 0 0.2. And if you work that out, 
you end up with um, 6 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, mole. So now you need to understand things carefully here. In the beginning, before the reaction started, any of the reaction started, from these two numbers, we can see that this is how much HCl we had. Okay. Then the NaOH and the HCl, they started fighting with each other and they started reacting with each other. Yeah. And we know that the there was more HCl, there was leftover HCl. How much leftover HCl was there? Well, that's this number over here. So then what number could we work out now? Well, what we could now do is we could calculate if this is how much HCl we had in the beginning, after the reaction, this is how much we have, then what, what could we calculate, guys? Well, we could calculate how much HCl was used when these two were reacting in this reaction over here. So we can now go say, how many moles of HCl did we use in reaction number one? And that's gonna be um, the original amount minus the amount that's left over. And if you calculate that, you end up with 2.5 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, so now we know how many moles of HCl were used in this reaction. Now we know that this one was the excess because there was leftovers. So that means this one is the limiting. What do we know about the limiting reactant? We use all of it. So now we can look at this reaction, which is already balanced. And if we know how many moles of HCl we used, remember you're not gonna use, for this part here, you're not gonna use this number. You're not gonna use this number. You're gonna use this number because this is how much we actually used in this reaction. This number was just the amount of HCl that we have in the very beginning, which was over here. And this number was how much HCl was left over after this reaction took place, okay? So we have, we're gonna use this much uh, HCl over here. So then you can work out how much NaOH we used over there. And so the ratio is one to one. So we can then say, um, therefore, the moles of NaOH used um, in this reaction one will be equal to uh, 2.5 times 10 to the negative three moles. So now we know how many moles of NaOH we had in the very beginning. Because it's a limiting reactant, we use up all of it. So we know that the amount that we have here is the same as the amount we're gonna use in the reaction because we're gonna use all of it and there will be no leftovers of that one after the reaction. Okay, so now we know the volume of NaOH in the beginning and we know how many moles of NaOH there was in the very beginning inside here. And so we can now go use this formula again. So we can use C equals to N over V. And so we can go say the number of moles of NaOH was 2.5 times 10 to the negative three over its volume, which was uh, 0 0.15 decimeters. Okay, and if you calculate this, you end up with um, 0 0.01, or you can actually write it in different ways. So 0 0.0167 uh, moles per decimeter. You could also round it to, um, and this I'm getting from the memo, you could also round it to 0 0.017, for example, if you round to two decimals or two decimals over there. And then, or you can just round it to, you can round all of this up to 0 0.02 moles per decimeter. So you could give this as the answer, this is the answer, or this is the answer. All three of those were accepted.